Hi everybody, thanks for joining the SMACS Practitioner Forum. This is Tanya with the Product Management Team and today we are um, going to talk about SMACS monitoring. Um, for those of you who haven't joined the sessions before, let me see if I can get rid of that WebEx uh, pop-up. Um, in the Practitioner's Forum we cover sometimes uh, best practices from the products and R&D team. Um, sometimes it's just drop-in office hours and then other times we have a specific topic for discussion and that's the format for today. And our discussion topic is uh, SMACS monitoring. Sorry, I'm just going to try one more time to get rid of this uh, window. Can Scott or somebody tell me, are you seeing that at the top of the screen? It's kind of big. The list of attendees? No, it's the big WebEx uh, toolbar at the top. You don't see that? No, I don't, no. Excellent. That's good to know. Um, sorry about that. So the discussion for today is uh, monitoring, and we have um, two guest speakers. We have Tal Tomlin from uh, Microfocus Operations and Brian Bowden from Greenlight, and they both have a few slides to help lead the discussion, but we're hoping that you'll jump in and ask questions um, as needed. And really, it's just, again, to bring some best practices and lessons learned and, and how uh, those have been, that have been doing it for a while are approaching it to help inform your projects. And then we'll wrap up at the end with just a reminder of the upcoming sessions. So uh, without further ado, I'll introduce Tal Talman, who is the Operations Team Manager for, uh, within Microfocus for SMA and SMACS specifically. And Tal, uh, I'll just go forward the slides for you to say next, next, next. Okay. Hi, everyone. Okay. So um, as a matter of approach, our goal as, a, as the operations team is to be being proactive in preventing any uh, end user affecting outages uh, for SMACs. And for that, we are using monitoring. It is important to mention that by setting up monitors, we are doing only half of the work, uh, other than uh, setting up and defining what needs to be monitored. And setting up the monitor, we need also to define for each one of the monitor what need, needs to be happen in case that uh, the monitor is triggered, an event or an alert. And so, sorry. I probably should have given a little bit more context. So um, Tal's team um, is, was responsible for um, monitoring some of the applications within the SAS environment. And specifically, Tal's talking about SMACs here. We don't have an internal service for SMACs. This is an internal service that we run for, um, for our internal customers, Microfocus IT being one of them. So it's a true... Um, environment, production quality, and, and all standards with high availability, and um, and running a production customer, but it's it's a uh, it's for internal. And Tal, you're just a bit close to the microphone, I think. Excuse me. You're just a bit close to the microphone. I think it, it, I think it's you that we hear breathing. So that's, okay. That's much better. Now, okay. Sorry, so, <clears throat> okay. So as a matter of approach. Um, our expectation that in case of production issue, our monitor will trigger an event. If we have an automation, uh, the event should trigger an automation. And if the issue is not fixed or if we don't have an automation, the issue is being escalated to our NOC. The NOC, uh, this is a team in a micro focus which is watching uh, the events 24-7 and they have run books how to handle each one of the of the events or each one of the issues that uh, they are facing and if the issue is not fixed uh, the issue is being escalated uh, to the operations team uh, in terms of monitor we kind of i would like to distinguish between two types of monitor uh, the first one is production critical monitors. We have some things which we think that, you know, it is very critical to monitor because if something get broken or if something get above a specific threshold, it might put 
the service to the end user in a risk. Uh, and the second one, there are some monitors which we can set up uh, mainly for statistic um, matters. For example, we can monitor the amount of tickets uh, in the system or in some cases to monitor uh, the behavior of specific metrics over time. And I prefer to distinguish because mainly our main topic here is about the production critical monitor. It means the, the monitors that in case that they are failing needs to be escalated. Uh, and they are running 24-7 because we are committed to a 24 uh, by 7 uh, service. Uh, one more thing is that uh, using our monitor, we are using templates. So uh, in case there is a need to set up a new environment, uh, we can easily uh, migrate the tenant into the new, the templates, into the new environment, migrate them there and uh, deploy monitor out of these templates uh, very easily. Okay, uh, Tonya, you can. Uh, move to the next slide. Okay, I started to speak about uh, the NOC. The NOC is a team in Microfocus, which is kind of providing a first uh, tier uh, of intervention in case of production issue. They are uh, providing 24 by 7 uh, support. And um, they are not uh, expertise in a specific service of a specific product. They have their own processes. They should get run books for each one of the monitors, which will instruct them how to behave. And for each one of the monitor, based on the urgency, based on the scenario, we have a defined escalation path. So they will know that if the issue is not fixed, in some cases, if this is a critical issue, which is my affect, you know, the uh, service, they need, it needs to be escalated over the phone, even if it is during the weekend. Some cases that are less urgent can be escalated by email. So it depends on the urgency of the uh, issues. Uh, okay, uh, Tonya, you can move to the next slide. These are uh, just gave uh, a few examples. Uh, we are using SiteScope uh, for our monitoring. SiteScope is a tool developed by uh, Microfocus. And one example is the SMAX uh, System Health Monitor. SMAX has an internal system health uh, mechanism which is checking uh, the connectivity between internal components, like between the platform to Redis, between to platform to RabbitMQ, to Postgres, uh, and so on. And the monitors are written to the log. We have SiteScope monitor, which are monitoring, actually monitoring this log for each one of, uh, of the components uh, being measured in the uh, system health. And in case of failure, uh, the uh, alert is sent to the NOC, and the NOC are instructed to follow the runbook. This is one example. Sonia, please move to the next slide uh, for an additional ex example. Okay. Additional example is the business process monitoring. Uh, the business process monitoring, it's mainly about the end user perspective. Uh, we have uh, defined a list of, uh, currently we have about seven or eight uh, uh, transactions which we defined as major functionalities for SMAX and we have synthetic data, uh, synthetic data script. The, we are running the synthetic data script from uh, worldwide locations uh, every few minutes. So, and as you can see, the mo we are they actually uh, measuring two KPIs. The first one is availability, whether the transaction was successful or not. 
And the second one is performance. As you can see with the colors, uh, the colors indicates the performance, uh, which is actually measuring how much time it takes for each transaction from the time that it started till it was completed. In case of uh, failures or in case of a critical performance issue, the issues are being escalated to the NOC, which are which have the instructions how to uh, how to handle them. Okay. Uh, any questions? Any comments? Thank you, Tal. So um, our purposes of sharing or starting the discussion are. are two or three reasons, I guess. One is to think about some of the key considerations for your environment as you're setting it up for uh, customers on the call or uh, our partners as they're setting it up for their customers. Um, things that, that maybe you might need to monitor or considerations for uh, communications. Um, another thing that we wanted to talk about was the idea of maybe productizing the scripts. It's something that we've been asked, the scripts that we use. Um, so we'd like to get your feedback on that and then also just really to start a discussion track on um, on gathering monitoring requirements so with that as, as context anyone have any questions or comments uh, for Tal? I'll just take a look at the chat real quick to see if anything has come in hey Tal how did you establish the the synthetic transactions you wanted to pass through to monitor your SMACS implementation? Uh, we are uh, using uh, APM, which is a, a tool uh, developed by Microfocus, and we have, a, we have a tool called Vugen, which is meant to record uh, transactions. Uh, and into script. Now, uh, the scripts are being parameterized, so we right. can utilize them for each one of the environment that we would like to use. And we are running the uh, scripts from BPMs. BPM is connected to APM. It is pulling the scripts from APM and running it according to, to a schedule, which is defined and reporting data back. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So maybe folks could chat in if they are uh, in the their environments what tools they're using for monitoring um, or planning to use for monitoring or have seen at other SMACs or SMA uh, implementations. And then the other question would be to, and you can put the chat, just remember to change it to everyone so that we can try to get some discussion started here. And then the other question would be um, your sort of gut reaction, your thoughts on the idea of productizing the scripts that, that we have um, so that they were uh, something that you could, that obviously, so that you could use in, in your environment. Any, any thoughts on that? Please uh, jump in with your comments or... Um, Put some comments in chat. And while you're thinking about that, because I am sure you all want to participate and give us some information, help us here. <laughs> I'll give you a minute. But I'm going to switch over to our next speaker. Thank you very much, Tal. If you could maybe hang out for uh, see, see if there are any other questions that do come in. Um, and I'll, I'll move over to Brian Bowden, who is with Greenlight. And, um, Brian uh, manages the monitoring uh, for multiple products, uh, including SMACs, and we've asked him to share some of his uh, best practices and lessons learned. Brian? Good morning. Um, I'm Brian Bowden from Greenlight Group. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? For those who haven't heard of Greenlight, um, here's a, a corporate slide that shows the, the offerings that we provide. Um, we are based in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, we are a market focus partner. Um, we do um, SMACs, OpsBridge, um, NNM, uh, data center support. So um, go to the next slide, please. Sure, and I'll just add that we, um, if for those of you who are new to the Practitioners Forum series, we often ask our partners and professional services to, to participate, not just because we don't have other partner, 
partners represented today doesn't mean that they don't do the same thing. <laughs> but yeah. Brian was Brian was good enough to uh, help lead the discussion here. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. Um, one little sales pitch. Um, we do have a SMAX as a service offering. Um, it can be we can it can be on a dedicated or shared infrastructure if we host it. We uh, manage it if you're if it's hosted on your prem. Um, and you can see the rest of the details here. If you have any questions, you can follow up with me, and I can get you in touch with our SMAX um, um, salesperson. So if you can go to the next slide, please, so we can get talking about the monitoring. All right. Um, one of our lessons learned as we're managing um, the SMAX environment, um, the Kubernetes cluster, we found that um, Kubernetes node memory, um, not the actual um, physical memory of the system, but the node node memory within Kubernetes is something that is very important for us to monitor. If we, we've noticed that um, if we um, get to the 90% range or even, even to 92, 93, um, we see real problems with the, the cluster itself and, and we've had some some downtime issues with that so in order to monitor that we um, take we have a Perl script that um, uses the Perl API and we um, gather the memory for all the nodes um, the Kubernetes node memory and we place that into the OA agents coda and once we have it encoded, then we can monitor it through threshold policy, and we're also um, forwarding that that information over to OpsBridge, OpsBridge Analytics, um, so we can do um, analytics against it. Um, we can do reporting and those type of things. Um, I've included a link here. I think we're going to put that in chat, but this is um, the document on how to get that insert to work. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Um, it might sound daunting to do, but this is 90% of the script that we use um, where we just um, pull the information from the top nodes, um, which gives us uh, the metrics. Um, we parse that out, um, we put it into an array, and we insert that into, into Coda. So it's not um, a large ask on, on the scripting side, but it's something that we found that's very vital within our organization to monitor um, the multiple SMACs and environments that we support. So, um, next page. Um, we are also using uh, BPM synthetic transactions as, um, um, I forget his name, but um, as the last speaker was speaking of. Um, the things that we're, we're monitoring in our transactions is we um, log in and we do a, we create, a, a, create an incident and then we log back out. Um, we, we're also um, verifying the password reset um, portion of SMACs. Um, we're using that through uh, Google um, allows us to create an application and then we can use their access codes to enable us to create up an email um, within Gmail that we can actually monitor uh, mailboxes. Um, Within Google, you have to actually click the button, you, you know, so it's an actual person. So we have to set up multiple accounts and different things. But um, it's one way for us to verify that the email um, portion of SMAX is working properly. And then we also um, we send a, an ESS um, portal request. Um, we just log in, create that request, and log back out. So these are just um, three of the examples of our BPM synthetic transactions. And that data were um, dashboarding within OMB and we are um, sending it over to Ops Analytics for, for long time storage within Vertica. Um, next slide please. Um, we're also using um, um, site scope monitoring. Um, what we're using it for is um, the URL portion. So these are five URLs that we find that um, are important for us to monitor the IDM, the back office, the CDF um, swagger, the management portal, and the production tenant. Um, what we're looking for here is we're just looking for a return of a 200 status 
Um, and what we do is we allow three failures and then alert is being, is being created. Those alerts are sent over to OMI. Um, we notify our team through email. Um, a ticket is created also, but um, through our email, we get notified notifications um, for our support and our on-call support. So um, as you can see, these are uh, these are the actual URLs. I didn't scrub our host names out, but um, if you're going to set up these monitorings, you can just plug in your own host name there, and it, they should work. Just a note, though, the CDF swagger is pretty noisy, so we have um, extended how many failures are on on that one. So. If you can go to the next page, please. Another thing we're using is Uptime Robot. It's an app that goes out there and does similar what our site scope monitoring is doing. It goes out there and looks at a URL and verifies it gets a 200 code. Um, there are no um, no ways of saying I want to be notified after three downs or four or five. Um, as in SiteScope. So this is pretty noisy. We we started with this um, just as a, something to put into place within our monitoring so we can get the URLs monitored quickly. Um, we do find it's pretty noisy in our email. So we rely more on the SiteScope monitoring, but I just wanted to, to bring it up here as as something that um, might work for your your team uh, as, a, as a URL monitoring if you don't own SiteScope. Um, Next slide, please. Um, some of the other things that were just a miscellaneous monitoring that we're doing. Um, we have um, individual pod memory monitoring. So we're we're looking at the actual node, Kubernetes node memory, for, and then we're looking at the actual pod memory. We're not alerting on the pod memory, but we are collecting that data, forwarding it over to OpsBridge Analytics so we can do some analysis on it, um, but currently we're not we're not sending out alerts if a certain pod gets too high. We have seen that the um, through the different versions that the rabbit pods um, need to be restarted at times because they they do start to run into issues as as they grow. Um, so I have some specific dashboards built to monitor those within OBA. Um, on the second line here, we uh, we do have a Perl script that um, verifies that all of our pods pods have been started and they don't take too long um, to come back up on a restart. We are also monitoring to make sure that um, we don't have any um, servers that are cordoned um, in a cluster in a Kubernetes cluster. If you have a cordon node, that means that no pods are able to move to that node. Um, so it's a bad situation if there is a failure on one of the other nodes on one of the worker nodes that um, if you have multiple core nodes then um, those uh, pods will not automatically be restarted and it will cause problems within your application. Um, something we're looking at in the future, we're going to start consuming um, Prometheus data in Dakota. Um, we haven't put that into place yet in our environment, but that's where we're going to go next. Um, Prometheus um, provides um, pretty in-depth data. Um, we just need to get it into our CODA so then we can also move it into OMI or OBA for for our management. So, next slide. Oh, this is my inside. So, if you have any questions, if I went too quickly over anything, I can uh, we can revisit it. Um, I thank you for your time today um, for allowing me to come and just share what we're doing in our monitoring. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for sharing. So just look at some of the questions that have come in. Um, one thing, just while I'm, I'm looking at that, uh, I don't know that Tal mentioned the items that we're monitoring, but I think they're they're similar to the things that you mentioned in terms of the login and creating requests. I think we've got, what, about eight or 11 now, um, Tal, that we're monitoring in our internal environment. Excuse me? Uh, just in terms of uh, Brian was mentioning that what they're creating uh, fake transactions for in terms of monitoring login and creating requests. I'm just commenting that I'm sure we have a pretty similar list. We're looking at 
Um, yes, we, we have a list and we are also monitoring the backend, like uh, the uh, instances or the uh, the database, RabbitMQ, queues, there are a lot of, uh, a lot yes. of things out there. Um, so let me see some of the questions here. Uh, okay, so a comment back on the scripts. Um, if, if we were to productize them, would they be product dependent or something we could use a box? Um, <clears throat> so, the, I mean, the discussions are early, but certainly the intention would be uh, if you're using the same tools um, as we do, that they, that they would be, uh, be able to use with some configuration. I don't know Tal or others if I have a comment on if other tools are used and how applicable they are. I think that uh, you know. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there, there is a question of what needs to be monitored, but uh, some of the monitors might be dependent on the on the setup. Because, uh, for example, if we are running in AWS, we have some setup which is dedicated to AWS, someone else which is using a different implementation, it doesn't mean that it doesn't need to use maybe the same monitors, but maybe there is a different way to set up the monitors. Yep, and uh, there's some other information here in the chat, so thank you for that. Um, and Chris's comment about uh, just even having best practices, um, documentation, uh, advice, uh, I think is a good good suggestion as well. Um, any other questions or comments for either of our speakers? Yes, qu a question. I put it on the chat. So you have transactions creating incidents and requests. Um, how do you clean them up afterwards? Because after a while, basically you are putting additional load on your on your database, and you know if you have some KPIs on incident resolution or and so on. How do you deal with that? Do you... We have uh, in our uh, in our monitors in our scripts we have a transaction which after you know we are opening uh, for example a request. Then uh, after that we have a transaction which is moving the uh, request to abandon a uh, state. In uh, Smacks, uh, requests are not being deleted, but moving them to abandoned uh, state uh, promise that, for example, uh, it will not, uh, there will not be any SLA calculation over this ticket or over this request and things like that. So um, this way we are avoiding an uh, you know, overhead of the environment. And, and also we have well, maybe a... one one other thing to add, uh, Emmanuel. This is done in a separate tenant, right? It's it's a DevOps tenant that's dedicated to monitoring. It's not done in your in your you know main production tenant. Ah, okay. So you create a specific tenant just for yes. the monitoring. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying, Brindusha. We had a I don't know if our uh, Mick is on the call, but we were looking at their monitoring system yesterday, and they do the same. They've set up a a specific tenant for that because most of the the work is at the farm level and not dependent on a customer's tenant. Any any other questions, comments? Okay, well we will um, we'll move on to the, to the wrap up. Uh, uh, certainly, if you have uh, thoughts afterwards, obviously send them in. Um, if there's Folks that are, you know, once you start looking at this for your own implementation, we need to um, set up a another meeting or a special interest group of sorts for our monitoring gurus. That might be uh, uh, a good idea. Just let us know. Um, wonderful. Thank you, Brian and Tal, for sharing. Really appreciate it. Um, just one little slide here for wrap up, and that is to talk about the next session. So hopefully by now everyone has seen the invitation to the release readiness webinars, and it says Feb 27 here, but it depends on, um, on your time zone. So we will use this practitioner's form slot, as we always do, for our release readiness, but for those in, um, in APJ, there's actually a session the day before. Uh, for my time zone the day before, <laughs> but hopefully you got an invitation for that. Um, customers uh, can find their registration links on the 
Practitioner Forum topic page. So you just click on that and it'll register you for the event. Internal and partners, though, should not use those links. You should use the training, uh, the Aspire Saba links to register. Um, we don't currently have our sessions planned after February. Typically, after a release, we'll do an office hours so that as people are starting to uh, download and explore the new release, uh, there's an opportunity to come in with questions. The, the 2019 02 release does not have a lot of new capabilities or, or uh, changes for the SMAX customer. It really is mostly on the SMA mixed mode where we've made uh, the investment. So I don't expect that there will be a lot of questions or comments, but um, maybe we'll do a, an office hours for that session. But please do email me with topics that you would like to see here. Um, areas where you want to either drill in as we did today and have some of our customers or partners um, lead the discussion or um, where you're looking for more best practices from MicroFocus or, or other. Um, we're looking for your feedback there. Um, right, with that, um, I will leave you on uh, this one page here with just links to our guides and help for those of you that are new to, uh, to SMAX. I want to remind you of the, um, the doc site. And in fact, it's just had a nice refresh. Uh, you might notice, but also within that is the Getting Started and Implementers Guides. There are must-reads for folks coming into SMAX. Um, and then, of course, if you're here, you know you got here through the uh, community, but there's uh, several forums that are one for discussions, uh, one for us where we post our content for learn, and then um, the idea exchange. Okay, everyone, I'll give you back uh, 27 minutes. Thank you again to our speakers, and thanks to everyone for joining, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.